So welcome, my name is Kim Dankey. I am your Fast Track instructor and tonight we are going to do some simple food combining. This is day two of your seven day Fast Track. I hope that you are in the Fast Track group on Facebook. And what I'd love for you to do, if you did not watch last night's video, please go back and watch last night's video. It is a program overview, a program overview. And then each morning in the group a post comes out and it's a post that gives you kind of like a little assignment to do I would love for you to dig in and do that assignment I really really want you to comment below the post letting me know that you did because I ask you a question each day or I ask you to post something each day and I would love to see you do that and I also, there's a video of me showing you how to use the website because that is one of the most important things is that we shorten the learning curve on you using the website. So please dig in to the Fast Track this week. The Fast Track videos, all 14 of them, take less than one hour to watch all of them. After you've done that, you can take the test, pass the test, and earn a badge. To continue with you, your learning, you'll do Travis's original daily doses. But this week is all about the Fast Track week. Okay, and Elaine from Maryland is saying that a coworker of her daughter attends, okay, well, the word spreads. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, I'm glad y'all are here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. And tonight is all about simple food combining. I want you to see the things that kind of go together and why we would put them together. I'm going to share my screen with you. And um, <clears throat> And we're going to look at this. If y'all don't mind, tell me if you can see this right here. This says uh, Shibola's new member fast track phase one, week one. Okay, I can tell on my Facebook that you can see this, which is great. Okay, so what I'm going to do on this is I am going to read out loud the items that are come in each category. The reason that I am going to do that is because I want you to become familiar with which foods are in each category. So we've divided up all whole foods into seven different categories. Well, these seven different categories, it's really good to familiarize yourself and begin to learn which foods are in these categories because do you know that all of this is going to eventually become second nature? You're going to think of foods as categories. You're not going to necessarily think them as their food anymore. When you see lima beans, you're going to think category three energy carb in the future. So it's important to start familiarize yourself with what foods go in which categories. So anytime I come to a new list, I'm going to read out that list. Now this is going to be an interactive class. Um, if you don't have pen and paper with you right there, you might wanna grab that. If you do have um, pen and paper, I want you to make down, write down things that you like, some meals that you could put together. And I'm gonna ask you some questions, so be ready to type if you don't mind. You can do it in the Zoom room or on Facebook Live. Okay, so category one is a lean protein. And if you'll notice on our um, website here, and by the way, you're going to get this website. Um, hey Ginger on Facebook and Brenda Price on Facebook. So you're going to get this in the new member fast track group. So don't worry about writing everything in this down. But what I do want you to do is start to create yourself some meals because this is all about putting together some meals that you can have. So you can have two to eight ounces of a lean protein in a meal if you wanted it. So some of ours are egg whites, fish, chicken breast, turkey breast, pork tenderloin, boar's head turkey, boar's head chicken breast, boar's head London broil, low fat cottage cheese, fat free cottage cheese, Greek plain yogurt, Hebrew national 97% lean beef frank and 96% lean ground meat. Now this is by no means an exhaustive list of lean proteins. This is some of the most popular lean proteins and so that's how we give you those because you really just need to get through this first week right you need to get through this first week so you don't need to have an entire library of food at your fingertips you need to have a few foods at your fingertips and then you can branch out after your first seven days okay now if you'll notice that we've got a flame here and a plus sign this plus sign is not math 
we are not doing math, okay? It just means we're putting these things together either by cooking them in something, adding them to as a condiment, or putting them on a plate together. That's it. Um, so that is a flame and a plus sign. So you can use the following cooking oils. These are the approved cooking oils. 100% MCT oil, coconut oil, ghee butter, hemp oil, or zero calorie cooking spray. If you're making yourself a little list of foods that you might need to get yourself started, please write down the zero drag, 100% cooking uh, MCT oil that is sold at the Shibboleth store. If you are not near one of our stores, meaning you're not in near Dalton and you're not near Kennesaw, Georgia, then you can order them online. We ship them to wherever you are, okay? If you're in the United States. And I'm not sure if I should be saying continental United States or not. I'm not sure if we ship to Alaska or Hawaii, probably not. So um, anyway, just make a list. And that is one of the things that you're gonna want from the Shibboleth store, the zero drag. The reason I like the Zero Drag best is it has 100 calories per tablespoon and it's been maximized for cooking. We use MCT oil for the purpose of cooking. It's great to cook with. It has almost no propensity to be stored on the body as fat. That's why we use it. But just because you're hearing me say that it's good does not mean that you want to use it as a supplement or make bulletproof coffee with it or add it to your protein shakes. We're not adding random calories to our uh, foods. We're using it for the purpose of cooking. It also has an extremely low smoke point, so you need to cook on low to medium heat. If you cook it on high heat, you are going to set off your smoke detector, and we don't want you to do that. And just the fact that I have to tell you that tells you right there that it burns up quickly. So the parts that don't burn up in the cooking process, whatever we do end up ingesting, burns up quickly. Because it has the natural tendency to burn up quickly, it creates a little bit of extra calorie burn through thermogenics, okay? But just because you're hearing me say that's good, don't think that you should go take it as a supplement because the, the amount of calories that are ingested by it don't offset the benefits, okay? So just use it for the purpose of cooking and it's excellent for fat burning. So you do wanna use it when possible. I also use it to make approved pancakes and anytime a recipe calls for oil, I use the Zero Drag MCT oil. So let's read over some condiments that you can use. Uh, any zero calorie condiment, obviously that's best. 15 calorie or less spices and seasonings, salt and pepper, 15 calorie or less coffee creamers, salsa, salsa, reduced sugar ketchup, mustard, hot sauce, and Kraft fat-free mayo. Those are just a few condiments. There is a very large list of condiments in the food library. If you go into the food library, there's gonna be a link for condiments. Just scroll down until you get to condiments, click on there, and you can look through all the condiments. But let's say that you're standing in the grocery store and you pick up some pizza sauce and you wanna know if it works and you look it up in the food library, but for some reason it's just not pulling up for you, then all you have to do is look at the nutrition label. When you look at the nutrition label, you're gonna look for two things. You're gonna look at the sugar content per serving. If it has five grams of sugar or less per serving, and then you're gonna look at the fat content per serving. It needs to have two grams of fat or less per serving. So if it has five grams of sugar or less per serving and two grams of fat or less per serving, then you can use that as a condiment as long as you aren't gonna use more than 50 calories of it in a meal. Because you can use up to 50 calories worth of condiments on a meal. Keep in mind, if you want to use two condiments, the, the condiment count still should not go over 50 calories. So let's you say you're using a slice of cheese that's 30 calories, then you'd probably have 20 calories for your ketchup. Mustard doesn't have any calories, so that was good. You could get three condiments out of that little combo. Um, so you're gonna look for that, and that's called the five, two, and few rule. One way to remember, which one did she say uh, had to be five, uh, five grams of less per serving? Sugar has five letters in it. So if you're gonna look for five grams or less of sugar per serving and two grams or less of fat per serving. And if it's got that qualification, then you can use it as a condiment, even if it's not in the condiment list in the food library. 
But if it's something that you want to add to the condiment list in the food library, take a picture of the front of the item and the back of the item, put it in the Shibboleth Fixed It page and ask Kim Shibboleth to add it to the food library because Shibboleth members help members by growing the food library with their additions. Now, if we look at this row right here, this lean protein cooked in the right oil with some condiments on here, what this is saying to you is that you can eat a lean protein by itself. You don't even have to actually combine that with anything. There are five of the seven categories that you don't have to combine with anything at all, and lean proteins are one of those. Let's see. Looks like I've got a question here in the chat room. Yes, Elaine, yes, there are some excellent MCT oil dressings in the recipe library. But yes, you would want to use MCT oil rather than olive oil. If you were to use olive oil, it is a holiday because it's not one of the approved oils. But yes, use MCT oil as your dressing oil. Yes, ma'am. That's awesome. You can do that. Okay, so let's scroll down a little bit more. Um, let's see, I've got some folks on Facebook. Hey, Julie and Karen and Angie and Barbara and Elsie. Um, okay, so category seven, which is shellfish. Now, this right here says that you can have two to eight ounces. If you'll notice, it's the exact same as category one ounces. Guess why? Because shellfish, which is a category seven, and Lean proteins in category one are the exact same thing. They're all a lean protein. But the reason it got pulled off right here and given its own category is due to medical reasons and biblical reasons, some people don't want to eat shellfish. So therefore, it's got its own category. I have literally taken the combination chart and drawn a black Sharpie line through any combination that had a seven in it for people that don't eat shellfish. So they don't even have to think about those categories, okay? So that's something that you could do for your own personal combination chart if you don't eat shellfish. But let's read over some shellfish. Crab, lobster, shrimp, scallops, oysters, mussels, clams. That is not the exhaustive list, but that is uh, some of the most popular ones. So you could use any of those. Now, then you can use the right cooking oil, put on the right condiments, and there you go. You can eat shellfish by itself. A lot of times people will use ghee butter here to uh, dip their crab legs in, or they'll make a shrimp scampi with that so, so it can have that, that butter flavor. Okay, so you're still eating the same things that you were before, just maybe with a, a, a change, um, like changing your oil, changing your butter, that kind of thing. So you can eat category seven by itself. So we're gonna scroll up a little bit more here. I say hey to Angela and Cindy Lynn on Facebook. And what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna look at this new category right here. So this isn't like a number category. This is hemp products. And you can use hemp flakes, hemp, I mean hemp hearts, hemp flakes, very sweet hemp flakes, hemp protein powder and hemp oil. You can use those with a lean protein. That lean protein could be uh, one of these lean proteins or it could be the shellfish. Cook it up in the right oil, throw on the right condiments, and you have got an excellent fat burning meal. So far we've gone over all excellent fat burning meals because they have a flame and a plus sign. Okay, And I have recently found, now I've been eating the hemp bars for a while, that's a meal replacement, but I have recently found out about these hemp products takes me a while sometimes to try things, but I did, oh my goodness, they are so good. And hemp products are very good for you because they have lots of awesome amino acids in them, which we need for our tissues and our cells. Uh, these products have the same amino acids in them that you do in a mother's milk. So it's really, really good for you, these hemp products are. Um, let's see, we're gonna scroll down again, and right here, you got your category seven with your hemp products hooked in the right oil with condiments. So I'm gonna stop right there real quick because uh, I wanna ask, do y'all see some things that you like? Elsie, I am on Zoom. Yes, I am. Do you see any things that you like? Out of the lean proteins and the shellfish, what do you see that you are willing to eat? I'd love to know. Okay, so Karen in Zoom says that she likes a lot of them, so that's great. Awesome, shrimp. 
Fantastic. Okay. I just want to make sure that y'all are seeing some things that you like, that you like, because that's the most important thing is to figure out what you like, because on Shibboleth, you don't have to eat anything you don't like. So the important part is to start making notes of the things that you like that are in each category and familiarizing yourself with what comes in each category. One of the tasks that I like for uh, people to do is I like for them to make a list of all the foods that they like. Then look them up in the food library and write what category they are next to the foods they like. That also helps you start to figure out which foods are in which categories. Awesome. And Karen also says that she likes low-fat cottage cheese and the Greek yogurt. Excellent. Good. Okay. So I see that y'all are probably thinking through those things, and we're going to scroll up a little bit more here. The new category that I'm going to read over right here is category two, fibrous carbs. Now, the fibrous carbs are those carbs that are uh, veggies, you know, like cruciferous vegetables, that kind of thing. And you could use a half a cup up to one cup of those. You still want to portion control them because we're trying to uh, not make our stomachs have to feel so full at a meal. So you still want to portion control those. But some of the ones that we could use are broccoli, asparagus, squash, okra, green leafy vegetables, spinach, cabbage, cucumbers, bell peppers, hot peppers, cauliflower, kraut, and dill pickles. Actually, all of these are also considered freebies. Now, what that means is you can eat them if you had a moment of weakness or actual true hunger. Between meals, you could eat these as a freebie. But when you're using it as the component of a meal, still portion control it, okay? Still portion control it. Then if you feel like you're still hungry, go 30 minutes and really see if you're still hungry or not. And if you are, you could go back and have some more of those. Okay, let's look. Rebecca says that she likes these foods and she has the hemp products, but not quite sure how to use them. Um, this list is going to be on the, you're going to get this particular list in the Facebook group that I put you in last night. You're going to get this website there. So you'll be able to use that. I also highly suggest that you look at the individual hemp products in the food library because there will be different ways to use those, Rebecca. And I'm going to make myself a note. I'm going to try to put in the food library uh, some more hemp ways to use hemp. Okay, I'll try to do that, Rebecca. All right, so this is a category one plus a category two. So what might you see together out of category one and category two that you like, that you might want to put together? Somebody give me something that you think sounds good together. <clears throat> And by the way, a category one plus two cooked an MCT or a category seven plus two cooked an MCT is your fastest fat burning meal. So out of this list here and this list here, what two might you like to put together that would taste good, that you think would taste good? My first meal was chicken breast and broccoli. That was my very first Shibboleth meal. I cooked my chicken breast in 100% MCT oil. It was very, very good. I cooked my broccoli. I steamed my broccoli. I put some salt and pepper on my broccoli. And that chicken breast, you know what I did with that chicken breast? I poured the rest of the MCT oil that didn't get used up from the pan. I poured that in a little ramekin. And as I was cutting my chicken, I would dip the little pieces of chicken into that MCT oil and it tasted so good, so good. Okay, so one of the things, since I'm not seeing any answers right here, is you can do what I did, put that chicken breast with the broccoli. Maybe you wanna make yourself a 96% lean ground meat uh, patty with some green beans. They're not listed on there, but green beans. Uh, maybe you wanna do some turkey breast and and some squash, or maybe you're gonna do some fish and some okra. So that would be excellent for fat burning. Cook it up in the right oil, 
preferably the MCT oil, and you've got an excellent fat burning meal. And Rebecca says that she would like egg whites and spinach. And that is an excellent idea, especially if you're wanting to eat some fruit in the morning, egg white spinach omelet would be excellent to go with a little bit of fruit. So very, very good, uh, Rebecca. Thank you for participating in that. Okay, we're gonna scroll down and look at this. So we've got our category seven, which we've already read, and our category two. You put that together, cook it in MCT oil, doctor it up with the right condiments, and you have an excellent fat burning meal. And so what that means is that if you do those for the first seven days, you are gonna have really, really some great results because if you can stick with that, that is awesome. Throw in a few meal replacements, which we're not gonna go over meal replacements tonight, but if you were in the new member fast track group, I've got a whole post of my 10 favorite meal replacements in there. So you can easily go to that. So let's scroll down a little bit more here and we're gonna look at category six, superfood. Now, if you watched last night's video, you know that something qualifies to be a superfood if it has all of the macronutrients in them. For example, it would need to have water, protein, carbs, and fat. Okay, so something qualifies to be a category six superfood if it has all of those things in there. The reason I make that distinction is this. Most, um, most light colored beans are a category three energy carb, but not all. So those are, the, those are the little things you want to figure out. That's why I always tell everybody, write down what you like. Because if you write down, let's just say you write down that you like garbanzo beans. When you look that up, you're going to say, oh, well, this is probably an energy carb because it's a light colored bean. But then you're going to look it up and you're going to find that it's a category six superfood. So most light colored beans are an energy carb, but some light colored beans are a superfood. So you just have to learn that. And so it, I think your great northern beans are also a category six superfood because they have all the macronutrients in there. So there's those little caveats that you'll have to um, figure out. But most of the time, your lighter colored beans are going to be a superfood. And your darker colored beans are gonna be, sorry, I just said that wrong. Your lighter colored beans are energy carbs most of the time. And your darker colored beans are your superfoods, okay? Um, let's read over this superfood. Now, if you'll notice right here that this is a plus sign, but there's no flame behind it. So this is because these are a little bit better for fat burning. This is still great, okay? Still great for fat burning. It's just that these are just a little bit better. So we just like to make that distinction because some people want to have what's best, absolute best. So let's read over some things that are in your superfood category six. Pintos, black beans, red beans, soybeans, peanut butter, nuts, and seeds, okay? Your absolute best um, category six superfoods are pinto beans, red beans, black beans, and then your nuts and your seeds. Those are the best superfoods. You could throw in some condiments right there and you could have a superfood all by itself, all by itself if you wanted to. Does anybody, y'all see some category sixes that you like? Those of you that are in the Zoom room or Facebook, if you wanna type in a category six that you'd like, Yay, Karen likes black beans. I like black beans too, Karen. And I just bought 10 cans of them for $10 at uh, Kroger. That was pretty good. And they were the organic ones. Like, okay, yay. Um, so Rebecca likes peanut butter. Yep. Rebecca, make sure you're using the right peanut butter. Uh, you know, there is some Jif Natural that works and everything, but there's some peanut butter that is better. So like better than peanut butter works better. Um, that's funny. Nuts and more peanut butter, the P28 peanut butter. So those are some better peanut butters if you are curious. You could put peanut butter into the food library and drag the weight loss meter over to get your negative twos and negative threes in the peanut butters and see which ones are the best. Okay. But if you need to do, use Jif Natural, that works too. And you have 100% natural atoms. Okay, I don't know what that is, but uh, I'm sure it works as long as it doesn't have any um, hydrogenated vegetable oils in it. Sounds like it wouldn't since it's natural. All right, so let's look right here. So what this is saying is that you could put a category six 
and a category two together. So then doctor it up with the right condiments and you have a great, um, a great meal. What do y'all see right there that you might like to eat together? What looks good from a category six superfood and a category two fibrous carbs? Excellent, Rebecca. Okay, so a lot of times this is where Travis says you get your greens and your beans. Your greens and your beans come right there. So you can make a meal out of that. All right, so Karen says bell peppers and black beans. That sounds good and I like both of those. I like both of those. Personally, I would probably eat my bell peppers in little strips cold and I'd eat my black beans hot because I don't like bell peppers cooked. Isn't that funny how we have all these different tastes and everything, but I don't like bell peppers cooked. But I do like them in little strips. I like them in strips with hummus dip and that's a six and a two as well. So let's have a look right here. Now we've got category four. We have come to a new category, protein plus fat. And I want you to know right here that this is a great food to eat, okay? It's a little bit, because it's got a little bit more fat in it, it's got a plus sign with no flame, but it's still great for fat burning if you combine it with the right thing, okay? So it's an excellent protein. It's just got a little bit more fat in it than, of course, a lean protein does. Now, if you'll notice, look right here, two to six ounces, where the lean protein and the shellfish were two to eight ounces. The reason that you have to go a little bit less on the ounces is this. One gram of protein has four calories, okay? But one gram of fat has nine calories, okay? So you have to make that distinction. There's a few more calories in the protein plus fat. Therefore, you get a little less of it because there's more calories in it. But some of the things that come in the category four is whole eggs, steak, pork ribs, beef ribs, turkey spam, pulled pork, beef brisket, 93% lean up to 95.9% lean ground meat, turkey kielbasa, as long as no more than 50% of the calories come from fat. So those are some category fours that you could get started with. But as I've been saying, this is by no means the exhaustive list. Category two. Um, your fibrous carbs, you can just add those together. So this is where I do a lot of steak and broccoli or steak and green beans. Because if I'm at a restaurant and I want to get some steak, I know better now than to order it with an energy carb, the potato that it's typically ordered with. And so I order now my steak with broccoli. And so that gives me an, a great fat burning meal put on some condiments and there you go, this is great. And if you needed to eat a category four by itself, you can, it's just optimal and uh, to have it with category two. I often talk about restaurants right here because um, any meat at a restaurant needs to be considered a category four protein plus fat. Because what happens is even if it's a lean protein when you would cook it at home, when they've cooked it at a restaurant, more than likely they have not cooked it in MCT oil. Therefore, they have turned that lean protein into a protein plus fat because they've added some fats to it that your body then has to deal with, okay? So you wanna consider that a protein plus fat. All meat at a restaurant is considered a protein plus fat. The reason you do that is because then, if you watch last night's video, you'll know that you what you don't wanna eat with a category four are threes, fives or sixes. So you know at a restaurant, if you order a category four, you're not gonna order any energy carbs with it, you're not gonna order any fruit with it, and you're not gonna order any superfoods with it. But you are free to order maybe another lean protein or shellfish with it, and you can order your category uh, two fibrous carb with it. And what I wanna say about the, um, the lean protein and the shellfish, ordered with the four, that's like having surf and turf, or that's like going um, to the Japanese steakhouse and getting some uh, chicken and steak in your uh, hibachi, okay? That's what that is. So you wanna keep that, keep that in mind with that. All right, so let's scroll down a little bit more, and here we go. This right here, we're, we're getting a little bit more on our plate, right? Category one plus two plus three. And I don't mean more portion wise, I mean more flavors, okay? So we're still gonna use our two hand rule. We put our hands as close together as possible. 
we place them down over our food. As long as we cannot see our food around our hands, then we've portion controlled. So let's say that you're having a hankering for some lima beans. I use lima beans as an example, because I like lima beans. So you're having some lima beans. You're gonna do, when in your in weight loss, do about a quarter of a cup. Once you get into maintenance, if you wanna try doing a half a cup, you can. Some people find they can do a half a cup and not um, have an uptick on the scale. Some people find they need to stick with quarter of a cup. But if you're in weight loss, you're trying to achieve a goal, so let's stick with quarter of a cup. That's gonna fit really about right here. Okay, you're gonna have your lima beans about right there. If you want to eat an energy carb, and I always kind of reverse engineer this, I start with the thing that I need to make sure that I have certain things with it. So if I want to eat some lima beans, or let me just say, um, let's just say you're sitting there thinking, but I like potatoes, okay? Let's say that you want to eat a sweet potato. I'm gonna go, okay, I want an energy carb. I can have about a quarter of a cup of it. What must I do to make sure that this energy carb does not bring me out of efficient fat burning? You must pair it with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. So that just means that maybe on your plate, you have chicken breast with green beans and your sweet potato. Or maybe you have turkey breast with some okra and your lima beans. All of that would be on your plate. So maybe your meat is under here, your uh, lima beans or sweet potato under here, and your uh, fibrous carb veggie under there. You're still gonna portion control. But that gives you a category one plus two plus three. Now I want you to know this is good for fat burning. This is, this is our lifestyle column right here. We have, not necessarily column, but this is a lifestyle combination. If you are looking at the combination chart and you look at that blue column, you're gonna see that there are more flavors on your plate due to the fact that you put more things together. But that makes this program sustainable. Now in the beginning, if you wanna stick with the fastest fat burning, those are ones plus twos and MCT or sevens and twos and MCT. But if you wanna do this, it will not bring you out of the efficient fat burning. You may not lose weight as quickly, but it will not bring you out of efficient fat burning and you'll still have a perfect day, okay? And you probably will still lose weight quickly if you use these getting started because it's gonna be different than what you have been doing. And, and your body's gonna notice that and recognize that. Now, let me explain to you why it is that you wanna do this in this way. So let's say that those lima beans that you wanted, those, you're gonna eat those lima beans. Those lima beans are going to bring a little bit of an insulin release. It is, and insulin is our, controlling insulin is the number one way to reduce weight. The number one way. The number two way, and you have to put them together to really have your best is the calories, okay? So you gotta put both of those together. So let's say that you're gonna eat those lima beans. Those lima beans are gonna bring a little bit of an insulin release, but what you have done with the knowledge that you have gotten from this program um, is that you're gonna put your chicken breast or whatever you choose and your fibrous carb, whichever one you choose together. The protein in the lean protein and the fiber in the fibrous carb is going to neutralize the insulin release that is coming from the energy carb. You basically just created magic in your body because you're allowing those two things to neutralize that insulin release. Also, if you'll think about it, you didn't overeat the energy carb. You didn't overeat it. You had a quarter of a cup. If you go adding way more energy carbs and you think a lean protein and a fibrous carb are gonna negate that, but you overate your energy carbs, that's not gonna work either. See, the whole thing comes together. The portion control with the uh, addition of the foods neutralizes that uh, insulin release. So then you just throw on some condiments and you have got an excellent meal. Excellent meal. Okay, so somebody that's watching, what would you put together out of this category one, two, and three? I know the Zoom room would probably answer first because Facebook is a little delayed. Let's look up. Hey, Elaine and Amy and Lisa on Facebook. But what do you see that you might put together on a plate right here? Because I want you guys to leave with some meals that you wouldn't mind putting together.
Okay, so Karen says London broil. All right, got London broil with kraut. Okay, that looks good. And onions. Awesome. Oh, and you know what? I didn't read the category threes. Let's read them. White potato, sweet potato, oatmeal, steel cut oats, weight control oatmeal, long grain brown rice, quinoa, lima beans, peas. All your peas are category three. Tomato, onion, carrots, and then your whole wheat pasta and whole grain pasta. All right, and Rebecca says pork tenderloin, asparagus, and white potato. Very good. How many, how much of this category three are you gonna have when you are in weight loss? How much are you gonna use? Up to how much? <clears throat> Quarter cup, awesome, Karen. Thank you, thank you, Rebecca, thank you. Okay, so yeah, you wanna use a reasonable amount so that what you do pair with it can neutralize the insulin release that comes from that. Um, and right now, I'm going to take another opportunity to talk about what you don't want to eat with a category three. You don't want to eat your protein plus fat with your category three. You obviously would not put a category three with your fruit or your superfoods either because you don't have any real fiber or proteins to neutralize them, okay? But let's talk about that category four with a category three, that classic plate at a steakhouse or that hamburger with french fries that classic order at the fast food restaurant. When you eat that, there's fat in that protein plus fat. That would be no big deal. That is not the problem. The problem is that it got paired with the bun, if you're having a hamburger, or in the french fries, or the potato, depending on what meal uh, you're thinking about. The problem is that it got paired with that because first of all, the potato at a steakhouse is not even reasonably sized. It's huge, it's the size of your hand massive. So when you eat that whole thing, you are going to bring large doses of insulin. Insulin is a hormone. It's a fat storage hormone. So it is a growth hormone. It's a fat storage hormone. So what you don't want to have happen is that insulin is coming out. Okay, we call insulin the fat bus. Its job is to go around and pick up fat. Well, the protein plus fat that you ate has that fat in it. So those fat lipids are roaming around in your body. Seriously, that'd be no big deal because those would just get used up as energy and go away. That would not be a problem. But because it was eaten with the uh, thing that brought the insulin release, that insulin is going around and picking up those fat lipids and they're storing them. So this is why we don't wanna do this. See, this is very, this is biology. This is just what our body does. This is kinda, I call Travis a biohacker. He has basically hacked biology, put it all together in a program for us to use, and I love it. Now, insulin too, wanna make sure that you're aware of this, it increases your appetite as well. So it takes two perfect days after you've had a holiday, and I want y'all to know this, holidays are coming. Whether that is planned or unplanned, you can have a holiday, up to six in weight loss, all right? And once you've had a holiday, it takes two perfect days to get back into EFB. During those two perfect days, you may be slightly hungry, and that is because insulin increases appetite. So that's when you have to pull out that strategy and say, oh yeah, I'm not really hungry, it's that insulin. I just have to be patient and wait for that to dissipate and it goes away, I become less hungry, I get back into my EFB group and I'm not nearly as hungry, okay? So you just have to um, talk to yourself with those strategies and that knowledge that you know. Okay, we're gonna scroll down a little bit more and let's see, on Facebook, hey Lisa, on Facebook. All right, category five, fruit. This is the new category we've got on this row. Berries, apples, oranges, grapefruit, plums, grapes, bananas, peaches, pineapple, and kiwi. So those are some fruits that you could eat. And if you wanna eat fruit, the same exact thing with a category five, I mean three, category three and five, they're done the same way. They must be eaten with a one and a two. So this is where, um, this is where, who said the, um, the egg white spinach, Rebecca. So this is Rebecca. A lot of times I'll use that egg white spinach omelet as an example here because maybe you wanna have some berries. Now in weight loss, I would keep my fruit to about half a cup. I know it says one cup right there, but I would keep it to about half a cup in weight loss, all right? 
So maybe you have your berries and then you have your egg white spinach omelet. So these berries, they're gonna bring a little bit of an insulin release. Honestly though, berries are very low on the glycemic index. They'll bring the least of an insulin release. If you're looking for the best, uh, absolute best fruit to have, it would be any berry, okay? But fruit in general, we just kind of put it all together, is going to bring an insulin release. Therefore, you must pair it with a one and a two a one and a two. So you're allowing the protein and the lean protein and the fiber and the fibrous carb to neutralize the insulin release that comes from the fruit. And so that makes a great meal. I wanna make you aware right now, fruit just needs to be eaten differently while you are in weight loss mode. Weight loss mode, fruit must be combined properly. Once you get into maintenance, if you wanna have a serving of fruit, as a snack, you can eat that by itself, but once you get into maintenance, okay? But in weight loss, we just have to treat fruit a little bit differently and it does need to be combined properly because we've got to keep away the fat bus, all right? And hey, Wendy and Michelle on Facebook. So we've done some combinations right there and um, looks like we've got another couple of people that joined us in the Zoom room, Mary Ann and awesome, welcome. So we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna look at just some other things that you might use to make your meals, okay? Now, there's a hallelujah moment coming up right now. We include breads, some breads, in category two fibrous carb. You might be thinking, how does a bread qualify to be a category two fibrous carb? It just means it has enough fiber in it. And these particular breads that are listed in the category two, they break down in your body more like a green bean than they do a um, bread. And they do a bread. And that is awesome. That is awesome. Hey, Michelle, I see you saying hey on Facebook. And thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Thank you. So let's. there are over 60 approved breads in the fibrous carb category, okay? So let's just go over some of them, and I'll tell you what my favorites are. La Tortilla Factory, 50-calorie tortilla. Olay Extreme Wellness High Fiber Tortilla, Healthy Life Bread, which now is also called Lewis, if you're looking for that. Nature's Own Double Fiber Wheat Bread, Bran Crisp Bread, Healthy Life Hot Dog Buns, and Thomas Light English Muffins, the 100 calorie ones. All of those are just some examples of breads. But some of my favorites, I really like the Olay Extreme Wellness High Fiber Tortilla. If you happen to be having a hard time finding anything right now at the Shibboleth store, we have the La Tortilla Factory 50 calorie tortillas that you can either order online or go by Dalton or Kennesaw and pick them up. We also have the Bran Crisp bread. If you like a crackery type uh, bread, ooh, that stuff is good. They've got uh, sunflower seed, pumpkin seed, and then if you like something a little bit sweeter, they've got a raisin and honey one, and then they have just a regular flavor one. But I like the Bran Crisp bread. And they are actually one of your best category two fibrous carbs so that uh, for bread. And so you can use that. The other thing that we have at the Shibboleth store is the Shibboleth high protein brown bread. I'd like for that to be added to this list. I might have to make that request. But that Shibboleth high protein brown bread is so good. And guess what? It is considered a category one and two together because it's got enough lean protein in it and fiber in it. So that's really good. So if you're having a hard time finding bread right now, Order Bran Crisp, high protein brown bread, or the tortillas from the Chipotle store. Okay, so you can use all of those right there. Some approved sweeteners are, let's see, I've got a question on Facebook. Okay, can I have fat-free cottage cheese and pickled beets? So, well, what category is pickled beets? Because I'm assuming it's a two. And if you could, you could do that together because fat-free cottage cheese is a one. Um, if, if pickled beets are a two, then yes, that'd be a one and a two, Michelle. And then Lisa, so the approved rolls recipe in recipes is a negative two, is included in category two breads. If it says on there that it is considered a category two bread, then yeah, you can use that as a category two bread. That roll recipe was probably made with Carb Quick. Lisa, is that the case? Was it made with Carb Quick? Because if, if it's made with Carb Quick, Carb Quick is considered a category two. 
Okay, let's see. So the approved rolls recipe and resources. Yeah, that, okay. It, Lisa, is it a, is it made with carb quick? Right, right. It's just a, Okay, so Cleo is on here. Thank you, Cleo. Cleo says, if the beets have sugar, they're not approved. Thank you, Cleo. Um, Lisa, I would have to look at the recipe exactly, but if it's, a lot of times, those recipes will tell you what it's considered, and if it says that it's considered a category two, then yes, you can do that. You can do that. I'm writing myself down a question. Lisa, what will, okay, okay, so it should be a category two. We'll look that up in the end, um, in the recipes, and we'll see. But Car Quick is a category two, so it, it should be fine as a category two. Okay, so let's look at some approved sweeteners here. Thank you, Karen, on, on Zoom. Thank you, yeah. Okay, so approved sweeteners. You could use stevia, Splenda, monk fruit, xylitol. Uh, I actually use xylitol for most of my, like sweeten some hot tea and things like that. I use xylitol. I've got some monk fruit uh, pancake syrup that I use. And I usually don't do a lot of Splenda, but if I go to Chick-fil-A and I order my um, uh, Diet Lemonade, there's these used with Splenda, so I do that there. I tell you, what I love about this program is whether you do or don't do Splenda, this program is for you, and whether you use all natural sugars, then like, like a xylitol or something like that, a natural um, sugar substitute, it's for you. So we don't exclude anybody and what they're willing to do. So if you come into this program and you go, I don't do artificial sweeteners, then guess what? Just don't do them because there's so many options that don't require them. Okay, let's look at approved beverages. We've got water, zero calorie beverages, and approved tea or unsweet tea, and coffee with approved sweeteners. You wanna make sure that you get in your water no matter what, at least 64 ounces of water, but your goal is a gallon, 128 ounces. Minimum to have a perfect day is 64. Let's see what Ms. Cleo is saying. Okay, so y'all, Miss Cleo has a recipe and resources for pickled beets with artificial sweetener that would be a category two. So awesome. I'm not sure who, I, uh, Michelle, Michelle I think was asking that. Michelle, have a look for Miss Cleo's recipe, okay? Now let's look at the cheese that we have here. So up to 50 calories can be used as a condiment, but sometimes you're using a piece of cheese as your lean protein. Let's say you're making yourself an approved grilled cheese sandwich. You can do that too. In this particular case, it's talking about using it as condiments, so you'd wanna use it as um, 50 calories. And so fat-free feta cheese, craft fat-free cheese, board and fat-free cheese, Cabot extra light cheese, Laura Lean fat-free cheese, Kroger brand fat-free cheese, and Lifetime fat-free cheese. Now, Travis really likes the Lifetime fat-free cheese. You order that online. Um, I haven't seen it in any stores. But my favorite out of this is this Borden. Borden fat-free cheese singles is so good. It is so good. And then I like this extra light, the Cabot extra light cheese. It's a block cheese. And what I do with that is I, when I get it, I go in that first time I use it, I open it up and I cut it into 50 calorie blocks. I usually use that when I, I shred it over the top of an approved fibrous carb salad. And so that's where I will use that Borden fat, I mean that Cabot Extra Light block cheese. Oh, and Karen over here says that she likes Swerve and it's approved too as her sweetener. And then um, let's look at our lean proteins, our milks. Eight up to 16 ounces is what you could use. You're gonna use eight ounces if you're using it as a component of a meal. But if you were just drinking that as your meal, you could use up to 16 ounces of that. You can use fat-free Fairlife milk, Kroger carb master milk, and hemp milk. 
the reason that you are choosing to use those milks rather than a skim milk, um, that kind of thing, is because these have enough protein in it and skim milk doesn't. So that's why maybe in the past you were thinking, oh, let me have skim milk with my cereal. I'm going to, uh, you know, lose some weight doing that. The reason it probably never worked before is there wasn't enough protein in that milk to offset the starchiness of the cereal. And we have to control insulin as our number one uh, factor in weight reduction. So that's why these two are chosen because they don't really have the fat in them, but they've got enough protein in them to offset any starchiness in our cereal. Isn't that great to know? See, I find it important to know why you're doing what you're doing, not just what you're doing. Okay, now breadings and flours, coconut flour, carb quick flour, Bob's TVP, which is a textured vegetable protein, and almond flour. And I really like what Miss Cleo does with her textured vegetable protein. She puts that in a little coffee grinder and grinds that up and then puts it in a little, like a mason jar, puts the lid on it, and it's ready to go. So she can just use it anytime. She did a little video on that and posted that in the Silver Level group if you want to watch her video. Um, yep, yep, Karen, that is exactly why. The Fat-Free Fairlife and the Kroger Carb Master Milk have enough proteins in them, and that is why they're approved. Yep, aren't these classes good? You learn all the details. Okay, the Carb Quick is considered a Category 2 fibrous carb, so I will make myself these little um, garlic cheddar biscuits and use fat-free cheese and some garlic seasoning, and I, they're considered a category two. So I can have on my plate maybe a lean protein and then two biscuits, and that is considered a category two. And I have my one plus two right there. So some of the best cereals for weight loss in the first week is Kashi Go Lean Original, Kay's Natural Cereal. We sell that at the Shibola store. I like the French vanilla. And I'm going to try the apple cinnamon next, but I haven't tried it yet. High Low Nutritious Living is also another good one to start. And I'm not going to reread these condiments because we've gone over those enough. But let's have a look down here at these restaurants. Let's see, Lisa, if you drink, can you drink fat-free Fairlife milk with a tomato sandwich? Well, okay, so fat-free Fairlife milk is considered a category one. And your tomato... If, if you're using enough of it to make a sandwich, you'd want, you could consider that a category three because that, that, that much tomato is considered a category three. As long as you use a category two bread, that would be a one plus two plus three. But yes, you could. All right, let's have a look at these restaurants right here. So we've got, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with restaurants saying this. I really want you to go into the restaurant guide and I want you to look at the restaurants that you eat at the most. Click on the thing that maybe you've ordered in the past and read how you would order that. That is the most important thing. Read how you would order that. What if it says that you need to put this on your own tortilla or your own bread? You'll want to go prepared with that. We call that having a, a survival kit. You'll want to go prepared with that or either know that you need to do without it. So if it's something like forget their bun, you're willing to eat that, maybe that hamburger or that chicken uh, sandwich without the bun, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you like having it on bread or something, you'll want to make sure that you take your own. I've got this friend that comes to the classes in Kennesaw that he, uh, he says, oh, I never go anywhere without my tortilla. Every single morning, he puts his tortilla in a baggie and puts it in his pocket because he says he never knows, knows where he's going to end up for lunch and he needs to have his tortilla uh, to put his hamburger in or whatever he's eating in. So you want to go ahead and you want to familiarize yourself with the restaurants you like to go to and the meals that you like to eat and read how to order them approved so that you know this ahead of time. It'll make ordering easier. When you're at a sit down restaurant, it doesn't matter nearly as much because you have time to sit and think. You know, your waitress or your waiter is going to give you that time. But when you're in a fast food restaurant, don't you feel the pressure to order fast? You know, you often feel the pressure to order fast because that's the way it's supposed to be. And so you might get a little flustered. I don't know what to order. And, and, and you may just Throw your hands up in the air and order a random thing. I have a whole live video I did on that one night in, uh, in my car as I was driving around after somebody told me they gave up their perfect day because they didn't know what to order at a, 
uh, a fast food restaurant. So if you're interested in watch that, just go to that live video that I did in the uh, new member fast track group. But uh, don't feel pressured to order fast. If you have to let people in line go ahead of you to make sure that you get your order right, then do that. Or just stand there and patiently figure out what you need to order. But I would suggest that you already know before you get there if possible. Okay, but let's just look at some examples and I'm not gonna read this whole list, but I am gonna talk about some popular ones. Chick-fil-A, super popular. You can have eight to 12 grilled nuggets with a side salad. So when I go to Chick-fil-A, this is how I order. I want, I go, well, okay, let me say this. I'm willing to give up four of my nuggets to eat the fried ones. So eight fried nuggets is what I order. So I say, I would like eight fried nuggets with a side salad instead of fries. I want a diet lemonade as my drink. I'll take light Italian dressing. That's how I order at Chick-fil-A. Or I might say I want a number one with a side salad instead of fries and diet lemonade as my drink with light Italian dressing. The number one is their fried sandwich. I throw away the bun, I eat the filet. Every once in a while, I think those filets are juicier than the nuggets, so I like to switch it up and do a filet. You could also do their grilled filet and their spicy fried filet. All their filets are approved, and uh, you could eat eight grilled nuggets if you wanna have more portion, but eight fried nuggets if you're willing to give up four nuggets to get to the fried. And then I don't even use all the light Italian dressing. I just drizzle it just a little bit. And then if you are going to drink a diet lemonade there, I want you to keep in mind that that diet drink right there is not zero calorie. Their diet lemonade has 50 calories in it. I don't know what else is in there. I've never looked, but it's got 50 calories in it. So you do need to consider that as your extra for the day. So if it's a day that I like to do a Coco Ringa as an extra, but I've already had a uh, diet lemonade as my extra, then I don't do my Coco Ringa that day because I've already had an extra. You can only do up to one extra in a day. Um, so let's look right here at Mexican restaurant. Bowl of chicken soup, no rice, three soft chicken tacos with your own tortilla. Well, just to let y'all know, I had already given up Mexican restaurants. They, they never agree with me and I never did feel good after eating them. So uh, I think they're kind of a serious major comfort food, but I had given them up long before Shibola because I didn't like the way I felt after I ate there. But you can do those two things. You could also ask them for strips of bell pepper and use the cheese dip and strips of bell pepper. Choose, use the strips of bell pepper and cheese dip. I like to do that. I do that at home though. Okay, McDonald's quarter pounder on your own bread. Here's a real popular one, the Wendy's Small Chili Overside Salad, extremely popular. And then Burger King grilled chicken with a side salad and so forth. So I'm not gonna read over all those, but, you, but the best thing to do is just for you to familiarize yourself with what you like to eat. And, um, and we'll go from there. Let's see. Okay, I don't think I need to look up that recipe, Lisa, because you said it was with Carb Quick, um, and we're going to go from there. But right now, it's 9 o'clock, so it's time to hop off, but I want to make sure that, that if I'm on here with you, if you have any questions, if you want to see anything on the website, how to do it, where to go, y'all show me. I mean, not show me, tell me, ask me now. <sighs> Okay, Karen says, okay, so Karen asks, I would like to have hemp every day. Is there a time or combo when I can't use it? Okay, so if you're having hemp flakes, they are considered a category one and two, so you could have that with anything, okay? Hemp seeds are considered a category six, so you would not want to, you'd want to have those with a category one, two, or seven. So it depends on which one you're using. Um, so it just depends on whether or not it's a hemp flake or a hemp seed. Just use it in the right combination. Hemp flakes are a one and a two, hemp seeds are a six. Okay, so flakes, you can eat them with anything really. All right. 
Okay, so we're gonna go right here. The reason I went to this page is because I want to look at this real quick. This page right here, this is where you're gonna want to make friends with this page. There's so many great things right here. Here's your approved food library. Here's your approved recipe library. And here's your restaurant options. So these are gonna be some of your best friends in the beginning. You've got your video library here. And this is a great little resource here, this void replacements. Let's say you click there and it says, I want Cheetos. It says, don't eat Cheetos, eat this instead. So we kind of give you an alternative to that. I love the program so much because we don't exclude anybody in anything. Yes, we know that whole foods are good for us, but do we believe everybody's gonna eat whole foods all a single time? No, we just don't. And as much as we would like to get to that spot, we, we start where we are, we teach you these things, and if that's something that you work into, then you do. But if you never work into it, no big deal. We're gonna teach you how to do what it is to get any weight off using the products that, that you like. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. I appreciate that. But um, y'all let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, we are going to hop off and I hope that you enjoyed tonight. We, I will post this in the new member of Fast Track group and I want to see y'all answering the questions um, in the um, post in the morning. Nobody answered this morning's post because I asked you what you would put together as a category one and two meal and nobody said anything. So I want y'all to answer. Hey, Benita, thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Y'all let me know if you have any questions. And thank you, Miss Cleo, for helping me out with that uh, pickled beet question. I'm not a pickled beet girl, so it's not something that I have done much thinking about. So thank you, Miss Cleo. Y'all, Miss Cleo's recipes are amazing. So check those out. All right, well, since I don't see any questions, I'm gonna hop off. Thank you so much. I'm actually going to go live in just a few minutes because I'm going to show you my journal for the day and talk about my battle buddies. Okay. You're welcome, Karen. You're welcome. And um, I will see y'all in the funny papers. Did anybody ever tell you that? See you in the funny papers. <laughs>